When you're working with an XML layout file with a root element of motion layout, Android Studio 4 lets you edit the motion layout and add animations using the motion editor. Now, before I start making changes to create the animation, I want to affect the base state of the motion. I'll click on Motion Layout, and then I'll start making some layout changes. I'll click on this text view, and then I'll right-click on my right constraint, and I'll delete it. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom restraint. And now my text view component floats to the top left corner. I want to add some padding to push that component down a bit, so I'll go into Code View, and I'll add a padding attribute here, and I'll set it to 64 dp. And I'll run the application in a virtual device so I can see what the application looks like when it first comes to the screen. And I see my Hello World label in the top left corner with some padding around it. Now, in the XML layout file, I'll go back to Design View, and I'll go to my Ending State. In the end state, I'll click on this icon again, and I'm going to click and drag so I'm anchoring to the right side and to the bottom. And then I'll get rid of the anchors to the top and to the left. And I see now that when I click on the starting state, the object is in the top left, and it's in the bottom right in the ending state. Let's look at the code that's accomplishing that. I'll go into code view in the layout file itself, and I'll see that really nothing's changed. But then I'll go to that scene file, and I see that the constraint set for start is empty. That means it's adopting whatever is the default setting. But in the ending state, I now have new constraints for end to end of and bottom to bottom of, and an ID indicating which object is being affected. I'll go back to activity main and go back to design view. And I'll click on the Motion Layout. And then up here, I'm going to click on Create Transition Between Constraint Sets. I'll say that I want to go from start to end, and I'll leave this option at the default of Do Nothing. I'll click on this icon. And now I can see my transitions. And I see that I actually have two. I'll click on the new one that I just created. That opens a Transition Preview window down here. I'll click on the Go button, and I see the animation playing repeatedly. I can use this option to speed it up or slow it down. I'll click the Pause button. Then I'll go into Code View, and I'll see that I actually have two transitions, and I'll get rid of the second one. I'll go back to Activity Main. I see that I have one transition, and I'll preview it. Now I want to add functionality to the application that lets me trigger the animation when the user does something. I'll select this option to create a click or swipe handler. And I'll choose Click Handler. I say that I want to react whenever the user clicks on the text view object. And I'll click Add. Then I'll go to Activity Main Scene again, and I'll see that this on-click element has been added to the transition. I'll run that application in my virtual device. And now when I click on the message, the animation happens. And when I click on it again, the animation runs in reverse. Now, just to have a little bit of fun, I'll go back to Activity Main. I'll go to Code View. And I'll change this literal text value from Hello World to click here if you can. And I'll extract that literal string using an intention action to a string resource. Then I'll run the application again. And now I've created a simple application that lets the user try to click on an object, and the object continually runs away. So that's an introduction to Android Studio's Motion Editor window. When you're working with an XML layout file that has the motion layout component as its root element, and you open it in Design View, you'll see the Motion Editor, and as you make changes, those changes will be applied in the automatically generated scene file. There's a lot more to learn about the Motion Editor component, and you can find lots more information about it on the developer website.